I'm Gavin, this is Lex, and this is the Meadow Mini, our 2000 Bluebird Mini Bird School Bus conversion. Come take a look. So we got these colors because we wanted earth tone colors. We ended up with a rust white, and me convincing her to just get green in general. She got to look at a big swatch of colors, and we ended up picking the same one. It's called Meadow Green. That's how we got the name, the Meadow Mini. That's a, then another side fact to that would be that the Jets play in the Meadowlands, and they're my favorite team. So. I got to pull my, my hometown team into it. So come and take a look. So the floors, um, my friend Pablo cut down the, he milled it himself with an Alaskan sawmill, which is pretty much just a chainsaw, a four foot bracket. He cut all the, all the wood and he did that uh, a year before we decided to build the bus. So I had plenty of time to dry. And then since he wasn't using it, I asked him for it and we ended up putting it in the bus. And it's great because it's one inch thick, red oak and it was actually a little bit thicker so we were able to plane off uh, the top and it was just a whole really beautiful process it's on our instagram the whole process of uh, just getting the wood down onto the floor and putting the stuff what we put underneath it and uh, countersinking all the screws into the floor and just the whole process of doing the floor was a really fun project it felt like building furniture almost because we countersank put plugs in and everything pretty much everybody's favorite part of the bus I think is the flooring I don't know initially it was too wobbly so we added some pieces to it but for the most part we just keep a few glasses up here and all of our board games there was more wine boxes and this piece of wood ended up in here and then we ended up playing around with wood burning and we actually made this wood burning thing for fun because it was just a piece of wood before we need to put up there and we have so much space already and we keep getting more and more space since we've been on the road which is like you kind of start letting go of the things in the past and things start wearing through or more like what is not going to be up there anymore soon because you know probably these wine boxes will be replaced by and then those won't be here alexa and i were both kind of lost our jobs around the same time and we kind of wanted to refocus what we were doing and living in new jersey with rent being about you know twelve hundred dollars a month for a cheap apartment we decided that uh, we were going to go a different route and um we weren't sure what that was immediately. So what we ended up doing was planning to do a three month trip on the road in my car. And after four days of, uh, you know, hanging out and thinking about it, we decided to get a bus. And that was because one of our friends randomly just brought up how cheap buses were on Craigslist and we checked it out. And we found um, a bunch of buses for under two grand, which was, awesome because we were looking at RVs and other things and they can be $10,000 and have 200,000 miles on them but we actually found this bus for three grand it had 84,000 miles on it and we just bought it immediately we wanted it it was high ceilings fits in one parking spot fit all of our needs like we carry wood with us we have a cooler full of it we have a milk crate full of it it's all chopped and ready I guess I could carry less and just bring a saw <laughs> but it's nice to have it done and dried out and ready to go. So we, when we tore off all the ceilings, just like I cut all the rivets, took all the metal panels down. In doing so, I pretty much destroyed all the speakers that were already blown out and the antenna was bent. The actual stereo itself was a little like old and beat up. So we decided to just tear it all out, not replace it whatsoever, and then invest in one of these speakers, which is called an ION speaker. I love this speaker, it has an internal battery, it lasts like 12 hours unplugged and it's super loud and it has nice quality to it. So it really masks any diesel noise you would hear on a long trip or the sound of anything rattling or bumping. Just turn the speaker up a little bit, covers everything. We wanted to be out of our apartment and have the bus ready on time, but we only had 72 days. We had to have the whole thing like done on paper, done inside everything finished road ready plates on it and ready to go by that time and we we hit the mark we were done two days early actually welcome to my kitchen something i did before being in the bus was cook for nine years um, professionally so having a full-size kitchen was really important for me personally we cook all of our own food we we would like to eat out more 
and we'd like to, you know, not have to worry about it all. But we pretty much just buy a ton of vegetables and a couple different healthy meats, and we just try to, you know, cook everything our own and meal prep and not waste. And I have so much experience with food that it's really easy and, and fun for us. Maybe one of the reasons why it is so efficient, we know a lot of people in buses that do go out all the time and and we don't get it. Like I don't get it because I worked in restaurants. So I know the math of like food cost increase when you go out to eat and like you can do everything there in your bus. And we kind of fit it right in the middle of the bus. And it's kind of funny because before I even talk about it, like it has a window that pops open. And like my friends were always like, oh, you can leave the window open and you can like serve burritos out the window when you're traveling. And that's how you can make money while you travel. And I'm like, that's really funny guys. But in all seriousness, that system became our system for using an outdoor shower. So this actually swivels right out the window and then this is just accessible outside and you can just pop it on and take a shower outside if you wanted to. So that was, you know, kind of our way of skimping out of putting a shower indoors. So one thing most people will tell you if they have a shower in their bus or their van or bring a shower with them that they don't really use it often. They, they, most people use gym memberships and other things like that. So we didn't want to build like dual shower, toilet, bathroom. We decided just to put a toilet in there. That became our shower and we haven't really used it, honestly. We've been showering pretty well, you know, already. So anyways, the stove was given to me. I was originally going to do a two burner. I like it. It works great. Having four burners is nice. The only downfalls would be I have cats so that, and I cook a lot. So it's always getting little particles over it and I always have to wipe it down to make it look like garbage and dirty. Four burners is just a little excessive. I don't really need four. So if I ever did change anything here, I guess I would just tile it all the way across and then put two burners on top. I love it for now, but it was free. You can't complain about free. And then this is our sink. I got that for five bucks off Craigslist. This was completely to the T covered in rust. I just hit it with a wire brush and an angle grinder and saved an old sink. And then the actual faucet was supposed to be a cheaper version of something else. We ordered off of Amazon and that's just what came. It was a lot nicer than what we ordered. And then we were just like, cool. That's how that eventually became the outdoor shower too. Um, Cause we didn't even think about ordering with the like restaurant style top, you know, with the, like the bendy hose. So that worked out really nicely for us. And just having a full size sink is really important because where the heck are you gonna put all your dishes? Like we have this nice wood cover. People around, they have no idea that we haven't done our dishes yet. So it's pretty nice. We can fit a few pots and pans in there. And then to go on with our kitchen would be our wood burning stove in our kitchen, really. It's our most asked about thing in the bus. Does it warm? Does it heat? Does it this? So at the last event we were at, we just lit it up and had it going and we would put it out and three hours later, people would be, oh, it's warm in here. Is the fire going? Yeah, three hours ago. This thing heats 300 square feet. It's super warm, but we moved the curtain and we did build little like cement boards to go behind it. But the wood here doesn't get really that hot, to be honest. It doesn't get over overheated in my opinion. So we haven't been putting anything. The window's fine and it's on stone. We really like the stove. I highly recommend this stove only because it's so small. It's like the smallest you can get. It's 12 by 12 by 12. That's why they call it a cubic. Yeah, it's one of our favorite items in the bus. I think our original budget was like, budget was like six grand, which wasn't a lot after, you know, 3000 on the bus. You have and then you have to do a few minor fixes and handle all the legal work and then you have two grand to work with. But I was able to push our budget up and we built the whole thing for less than 10 grand. Almost everything in here is repurposed. So I'll get to that in a sec, but most of the money went into like technology, um, anything that had to be new or should be new, we got new. And uh, we just spent our time re reviewing each product, making sure when we bought them, we were getting worth what we were buying pretty much. Pretty much everything you can learn on YouTube. You've, anything you don't know how to do, you just really, you search up a YouTube video and you can teach yourself. So if you just have the drive and the will to do it, you can figure it out. This is our little cabinet space. The whole time we were talking about the build, I was like, oh, we need to have like storage like in like a camper or like in an airplane. So this is our little above head. Pretty much it's just for our food. 
So vices on this end, and then just like a few other th things on this side, mostly uh, like vinegar and straws and a few cans and stuff, like chips and cookies sometimes. My spice rack is always full. I'm always collecting more things. I'm always trying to find the weird things on the rack or like you go to like the ethnic aisle and you like just pick up something you've never used before and cook with it. These are nice. They went up, I got these up in like an hour. All the hinges, knobs, tiles and things like that I got were all from the Habitat for Humanity store so it was like a day where you buy a bag for four dollars and whatever goes in the bag you just take so it felt like you were just stealing you like just pull this bag up to the corner you're dumping all the hinges because you don't even want to match them up because they're all free and so we just got a bunch of stuff we were able to you know we pretty much just stuck with the same colors like metally brass look colors on it all of our knobs and stuff and it worked out real nice the countertop was super cheap but the tiles for the wall were the most expensive ones at the store because Alexa has the uh, expensive taste. And when she finds a tile she wants, that's the tile you get. So we ended up putting up, luckily I only had to buy three pieces, but they were like 15 bucks each comparison to a $6 job on the whole countertop. But I only needed to buy three pieces and it makes our window, which functions, you know, for good heat distribution for when we have the fire going and also just so we can keep an eye on our bus while we're sitting in bed and it's also super funny when the cats run through it also the wine box wall was something we kind of were collecting prior to building a bus i worked at a, a place that had a 150 bottle list on their wine list so we were always getting really nice wines and scotches and stuff like that so i started collecting them but you can go to any liquor store and just ask them if they have wine boxes and typically they just throw them out. So if you ask them to hold on to them or you just ask if they have any in the back, go from store to store. We were able to fill some spots with some various different brands that we wanted to get in. It was just a super cheap way to find some wood for the kitchen. Uh, nice big bed, I have lots of storage up top and there's an extra eight inches at the bottom which we built this cool little storage container down here. And uh, so pretty much it has one side that opens and it's just, extra storage for things that you know you might not want to be out and it's a little bit more hidden and then the other side was going to be where we were going to put a television we even built it so it's like a little stand like so we could have just drilled it in but we decided not to just because but it would have been nice to have a tv right here it would have fit nice but we just decided not to this is a queen size bed we built we like to say we built the bus around the bed because we technically it was the first thing we wanted to have fit and then we built across two shelves up top we have storage in the wall back here um, we have storage at the foot of the bed we have storage under the bed we have plenty of head space now Alex and I plan on being together for a very long time and getting married and having kids and we plan on staying in the bus for as long as possible so if it comes down to it uh, we will be installing a crib in this section here and that will be our crib area. So that'll be exciting for our future because Alexa's just a mom and she can't wait to be a mom. So that's down the road, but I, you know, that's something I can build while we're waiting, you know? So another great function of this bed and having cats and having a big back door, we have this whole window screened out for the cats and for us so we can leave it open and not get bothered by bugs. And so the cats don't just go running out and we get nice ventilation in here and, uh, we leave the back door open all the time so the cats can like really get air all the time and people aren't like oh they're stuck in a vehicle like break your window and report you to the cops now we leave two water bowls they have their water dropper they have their food they have their bathroom they have a v air vent on top they have the back door open when we leave most of the time because it's just wood back there and stuff and you know if somebody really wants to break in we don't keep tech in here it's just a bunch of recycled wood and bed you're breaking into a home it's not like a tech lab so we that's why we didn't go it, it, like a lot of people put an expensive lock on their door or think about their lock a lot we just put a simple lock on if somebody wants to break that off and not break my window i'd appreciate it you know glass is expensive so just you know don't invest a lot on a lock when somebody can just smash your window out is what i always say we love our bed um there's even a little nook back here on the wall that we built just like because the wall this wall is hollow it's got pine. So a lot of people ask us, do we have a deck or are we plan on putting anything on the top to hang out on? Now, we didn't do that because the bed is actually high enough for you to stand on it and enjoy the outdoors. So Alexa, you can show them how it... 
Uh, so our toilet just has a like $50 porta potty on it. It's pretty much just got a small uh, water tank on the top that's hand pumped and a gasket in between and just a uh, five gallon on the bottom. And we just do number one, no paper in it. And we use public restrooms for everything else. This is just for convenience at night, pretty much. And so you don't want to always be using public restrooms. And then we keep our cat food in that bag. And that's our little garbage and just uh, our broom. We call it the closet, kind of. You know, it really becomes the closet. I was joking with Alexa yesterday. I was like, oh, we should throw some shelves in here and just start storing stuff. But we don't really have that much stuff to put away, but. I was like shopping around for this space sized container for the cats to use as a litter box, just any plastic 10 inch container. And I couldn't find anything for the right size. So I ended up using the metal I removed from the ceiling. I saved a strip of it and I cut it and I made a little wood frame. And so pretty much I just put this little door on and now there's a three foot litter box in here, which is a wooden frame. And then it's just sealed and it just pushed right in. It's waterproof. Uh, it's actually more square inches than their original litter box and the scooper fits right behind it. They actually both fit in there at the same time. They hop in and out. It's got its own little door on it. it never smells. People are like, oh, does it smell like cat litter in your bus? No, we just change it once a day and they go in and out. They, they play with each other sometimes when one's inside, the other one's smacking the other one on the inside on the face. It's great not having to like figure out where you're going to keep a litter box. Some people keep it. They're like, oh, we keep it by the driver's seat, or oh, we keep it in our shower, or oh, we keep it. I'm like, no, the, they have an end table that's their own litter box. So um, we're really happy to save that area when we were considering moving the bathroom all the way to here to have more space inside. So that was really good for us. I'm really good, happy to have that. Okay, so for this wall, it's just kind of a decoration wall, a little extra space we had. We wanted to make it look simple but nice. We put our guitar up here so we had a place to hang it which we refinished and put our anniversary on so it wasn't a bunch of young stickers on it and stuff like that it looks a lot cleaner we also have a item that i found dumpster diving that has always been in my apartment it's a, just a really nice piece of something that somebody was throwing out and i was able to save and then this was just for my grandmother's home she was moving out um, of her home for 50 years after she was uh you know, moving into a, an old folks home and we wanted to find a little homey thing in there. It says home, tweet home. Okay, so we have like a mud room on our staircase that we just hide. We call it a his and hers because it has two steps. And typically all my stuff's up here and hers is below, but it just helps prevent, you know, dragging your dirt in, dragging your mud in. And then, so that's like a foot in. And then we have our fridge inside of this couch. So we have like, park mode and drive mode. Now, this is drive mode when the couch is put together. And then when we're parked, we take these cushions and we have a few different places we can put them. And uh, right now I'm just gonna throw them on the bed. And then we'll use this as a <coughs> secondary table for when we're hanging out, pretty much. This just swings open. And then you have our refrigerator. This is a winter fridge. It's a 64 quart fridge. It's AC and DC option, but uh, we use uh, DC power, 12 volt. So it's top loading. It can go down to freezing. It has two little baskets that lift out and come back in. So it's super easy to clean while you're on the road. You can just pull things out, put things back in. It stays very cold. It doesn't lose its cold when you open it like when you open a regular size fridge the air just drops out this it's nice and top loading super insulated you can see it's like two inches thick on each side so it's super insula insulated on the side of the fridge we just have like this is like a nice like bench seat cushion but it also unzips into a nice like blanket so we just store that over here it has extra insulation and then we just fill up the back with water bottles we always have a ton of water bottles because Lexi likes her spring water so we fill that all the way up with water and mason jars full of stuff when we go anywhere where we know it's going to be hot for a while we always like fill up all of our mason jars with water and stock up behind there just in case so we have good clean drinking water. This is pretty much how this area is when we're parked so we can get in and out if we're thirsty or want a snack or cook dinner and everything like that. And then when we're ready to go, we just slide it shut, close it up, throw the cushions back up top and hit the road.
it's pretty quick. You know, a lot of people have the space and availability to put just regular size fridges, stand up ones, or they've cut, they purposely built it to fit around their fridge. <laughs> we didn't get our fridge until we were like, like halfway through our build. And so I kind of had an idea of where I was going to put it, but I never really understood exactly how big it was and what, where, how it was going to fit. And I knew it was going to be eventually this area and it just turned out to be inside the couch. And it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not the best thing in the world. Uh, it'd be nice if it slid out like a drawer, but we just have two different positions this area is in and it works out great for us. We, I, don't, I have no complaints about it. So we didn't want to add doors here to get underneath because there's already doors here and behind me. We just made it so it completely removes. That way, if we ever wanted to use it as a table or something like that, we could. But this just completely comes out. It's just a little frame. And then underneath, there's it goes halfway across the bed, as, and there's a wall. It's completely sealed, so if the cats did get in, they couldn't get to the next area. And it just has shelves. And on one side, it has her stuff, and the other side, it has mine. In the middle, it has like a few of our more common like things that we use. But it's all, it's our whole wardrobe, pretty much everything. I think we only got rid of a couple boxes of things. Now I know a lot of people, they have a lot simpler wardrobe on the road, but we really didn't sacrifice much. We didn't have crazy amounts of clothes in the beginning. So we got rid of some stuff, but really just the stuff that was ready to go anyway. Everything else pretty much fit. We're set for winter and summer. Even knowing uh, we don't really need winter gear. I do have like a snowsuit and stuff like that back there and a couple extra jackets that I probably don't need. There's a lot of storage in there, so it's great. Okay, so this space underneath the back of the bed, we call our trunk, and pretty much from here down to halfway across the bed is just storage. So we keep a generator, a couple things full of wood, cat litter. And this is our cooler as well, but it's stuff full of burnable wood for us. All my tools, the cat carrier. We carry extra water with us. Like, I think there's two six gallon tanks back there, just in case. And we keep like extra oils and paints and things like that. But uh, it's getting spacier and spacier back there as we've been traveling. And then we have these holes in the screen, they're hot glued. Um, that's because of our door mechanism. It goes past the window screen. And that's this piece here. I don't know if you can get that, but pretty much when this is shut, the door is locked. And then we just have a pin that we stick through there from the inside. So the two holes in the screen just kind of line up with that mechanism. And we just hot glued it so the screen doesn't fray past that. But Every once in a while it breaks and you just have to add a little extra hot glue. That's what we do and it still st stays pretty uh, bug free. So I messaged Fern the bus and I asked them how they had their bikes up, which was a pretty similar way. I just bought a cheaper version of what they sent me. They bought a piece that was like 46 bucks. It's like a bolt lock for your front tire and uh, ours was just a $10 version. Hey guys, thanks for taking a tour of our schoolie. We had a great time. We hope you did too. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram at The Meadow Mini, uh, and we'll see you down on the road. Uh.